Welcome to another part of Reshuffle Essentials. In this video, we will look at a few very simple ways how we can save keystrokes and be more productive. That will cover finding actions more quickly, learning keyboard shortcuts, using code editing features, and different kinds of code completion and live templates. Alt Enter is the most commonly known shortcut inside Reshuffle. It is highly context aware and allows fixing issues more quickly. In fact, it is also the entry point to all the other features if we just start to type. So for instance, we can search for run configurations, for testing like sessions and coverage. We can use initial letter search. It is also highly forgiving if we have any typos. And most importantly, on the right hand side, we can see that for any action or to window, there's the shortcut shown. So we can learn those on the go. Let's go ahead and write some code and we will start with a method we call it write even numbers and as a parameter we will pass a collection of integers and in this case you see currently I don't have any namespace imports but as soon as I choose that type you can see that the using directive is added for me and I can continue typing I pass numbers the next thing after we've written the signature is that we can use the complete statement shortcut, which is per default on control shift enter. And if I do that, then you can see that those braces, so the method body is added for me and the caret is placed inside that block. Now we can continue writing our method and we will do so with a string builder. Again, here we choose to use that string builder type from a new namespace, which automatically also is imported. And now you can see I'm inside those braces and I can use the complete statement shortcut again, just to jump on the next line and insert that semicolon. We can continue writing off for each statement and let's choose a number from numbers. And from here we can choose to filter those numbers already. And as you can see, the system.link namespace is not yet imported. Uh, but upon completion, it will be done for me. So all the extension methods are still shown in the completion list. And we can filter uh, for even numbers now. And let's say we also want to order in a descending manner. Now we can use the complete statement shortcut again, but let's actually use that just for the illustration inside this Lambda expression. And what you see is that in some cases, we actually want that. We want to convert to a Lambda statement. And this is pretty easy using this complete statement shortcut again. However, I want to complete the for each statement. So I just move the caret. And from here, you can see the braces are added and the caret is placed inside that for each block. Now we can use that string builder and append our numbers. And as you can see, we have completion for a variable. We can now choose to append a line and pass the number here. From inside here, we might want to use string interpolation, but you see I don't have a dollar sign added yet. However, Reshuffle is still offering us to do this just by the completion list again. And upon completion, it will add the dollar sign for me. Again, from inside, I can use the complete statement shortcut just to skip to the next line. Now I want to clean up my code a little and let's say we want to extract some variables. To do so, I will use the extend selection shortcut. If I do this, then you can see that from my current position, the next meaningful expression or block is selected. And I can do this until the for each statement, for instance, the method body, the full method, the class, or even the whole file. By using shrink selection, we can actually go backwards in time and go back to our initial selection. But of course, I want to extract a variable from here. And again, we can find this from the alt enter menu, introduce variable. And now I can name my variable properly, something like ordered even numbers, hit enter and be done. It could be possible that I also want to reorder some of my statements here. This is also something we can do. There are several shortcuts that allow us to move statements up and down or inside and out, right to left. So if I do this, you can see I can 
I can change those two lines. I can even, if I use the string builder, for instance, move that inside the for each statement. Of course, it doesn't make sense, but I can order it like I want and how my code would look the nicest. Let's look at some more completion features. So just for the illustration, let's say we want to call that method again. We can do so by using initial letter completion. If I want to pass those numbers again, so basically a recursive call, then I could complete in a simple way with control space. However, I could also use smart completion, which uses control alt space by default. This time you see that only the meaningful symbols are actually suggested. Another feature I want to show you is the double basic completion. And for that, I want to call my utils class. And actually there's also a second method beside that pass path method. And I can reveal those by hitting control space twice. Reshapa will tell me, okay, this is private, but I can still complete and later choose to fix that by making that method public. Now I want to pass a regex string here. And upon opening with the quotes, you can see that I have immediately completion for all the different regex elements. So for instance, I can complete with character classes. I also have basic syntax highlighting. And in the end, I can use the complete statement shortcut again. The second method was the pass path method. And this is in fact attributed with the path reference attribute, which is available from the Resharper annotations package. And this will allow us that upon opening that string literal to complete with any file that is near our current location. Let's continue and use some live templates. And to do so again, we can use the alt enter menu and search for live templates. Immediately we will see there is an insert live template shortcut, which we can use. So control EL and I see the list of templates defined for me. I can search here, for instance, for fake or even for the most commonly used one, which is for me, CW to complete to a console of write line statement. Another really helpful live template is the nguid live template. So inside that string, I can type this, hit tap, and Resharper will give me a list of different formats for a new GUID that I can choose from. Live templates can also do more advanced stuff. So for that, let's select our full method body and then search for surround statements. This will give us a list of templates that we can surround the current selection with. I can also use the shortcut, which is EU, but I can also just start typing, for instance, using a try catch. So now for a moment, I have deleted my selection, but upon completion, you see that the selection is put into the try block and I end up with my carrot at the catch block. For now, however, let's just revert that change. Live templates are extensible, and this is exactly what I would like to do with you. So let's bring up the templates explorer and add a new template here. First, it makes sense to choose a layer to save our template to. So in this case, I will choose to save that to the personal layer. Then I choose the scope and can add a new template. What I want to do is to add a very personal to do comment. So for that, I will put a to do there as a comment with my initials. I want to include the date so that I later know when I created that comment. And I use one of those placeholders here. And as you can see, it is listed here in this parameters list. I can choose a macro to give that placeholder a value. And there's actually quite an extensive list to choose from. For the current scenario, I want to choose the current date and specify format macro. I can specify a format. Let's go with year, month and day. And let's also specify that this should not be editable. With the end placeholder, I can define where the carrot is placed after completion. And most 
Importantly, let's also give that template a name. Back in my file, I can actually use that template. Live templates can also be defined or used as file templates. So in this case, I could create a file template, give that a default name, and even add multi-file templates to that. One of the live templates doesn't fall into that category, but is in fact pretty neat. So let's write a new method and call this handle. And now from inside that parameter list, I want to define a generic parameter. Instead of going back and typing those angular brackets more inconveniently, I can just type T, hit complete to introduce the generic parameter, give that a name and tap again and give it an actual parameter name. As a last exercise, I want to write the previous method, write even numbers in a slightly different way. So let's write this again. Get even numbers. We pass the list of numbers again and are inside our method. Now, instead of using the conventional way of writing code, I will use post fix templates. The first thing we did was creating a string builder. And for that, I can actually just type SB, complete to string builder, and then use the post fix template that I just trigger by hitting dot and choosing var from here. This template will introduce a variable called string builder, so properly named already, with a new instance of a string builder. The caret is placed inside the parenthesis if I just want to pass some additional constructor arguments. Now we can iterate our numbers again, and I will do so with another postfix template, which is called for each. Upon completion, my for each statement is created, and you can also see that the number is properly named already. Now I filter my number by being even, and for that I just type the Boolean condition. And afterwards, I hit dot and type if to create an if statement from that. I can now append this number to my string builder. And for now, let's just append the number to string. And then finally, return the result of our string builder. And for that, I just type string builder to string. And at the very end, return. As of now, postfix templates cannot be defined in the templates explorer since they are highly context aware and thus must be implemented, for instance, through plugins. However, Reshaper comes with a feature called source templates, which work very similar to postfix templates, but are written inside our code base using extension methods. And this works very similar to the for each statement. So let's try this and we can do numbers again, type for each. And you can see one is our postfix template. The other is the source template and I can complete. However, you see that this is not as smart as the postfix templates since we end up with just static naming, for instance. I hope this was helpful to you in order to save some keystrokes and be more productive and hope to see you in the next part.